Hi, my name is Hari Ziad, and I'm the author of Black Boy Out of Time, which is a memoir about my life growing up in Cleveland um, in a blended family. My mother was a black, uh, but she converted to Hinduism, the Hare Krishna sect in particular, um, when she was about 20, which was 20 years before I was born. And my father was a, a black Muslim who um, came to Islam through the Nation of Islam. Uh, and I was raised mostly Hindu in a family with 19 siblings um, all together. Sorry, I have 18 siblings, but there are 19 of us. Um, and I am the only queer person that we know of. And so this is a story about what it means to make sense of your identity in a world um, that polices identity very strictly um, and where that policing um, even in a family that, you know, push this, pushes the boundaries of what is acceptable in terms of how we can live might internalize policing. Um, and I try to connect the um, idea of interpersonal policing to um, the, the larger system of policing and prisons in this country. I'm a prison and police abolitionist, which means that I believe in a world where um, communities can solve problems amongst themselves um, without prisons and police, which is a very, I know, shocking idea to people who might not have heard of it. But I use these stories to show how a lot of us have already been doing that uh, in our communities, and some by necessity, especially Black people who don't necessarily have the option to call the police without risking their lives. Um, and, so, and a lot because we know that the ways that we engage people when we love them, when we care for them, um, the ways that we try to solve problems um, are, are usually much healthier than when we just call an outside state that has no investment in our, our personal lives. Um, and so I use these stories of of my grandmother in particular who struggled with bipolar disorder through much of my life until she passed away when I was about 14, um, and how my mother engaged in a lot of her mental health crises um, that would sometimes get pretty serious, pretty violent, um, and how that demonstrated the care that she showed my mother, demonstrated how we can uh, use those same um, that same care amongst each other. Um, but I also am wrestling with how my mother and, and my relationship was impacted by her policing of my gender. And so trying to use the same tools that I learned from her engagement with her mother within my relationship to her has been a journey in and of itself. Um, and it's been a very healing journey. I think that prison and police abolition is centrally about healing. It's about how we become um, healthier people in regards to how we deal with our trauma, um, how we uh, actually deal with trauma instead of pushing it off to other people, instead of pushing it off to the state. Um, and so I talk about what it was like to, to learn these lessons over the course of my life, um, which eventually brought me to New York um, where I got involved with a, a bunch of activism here around the times that um, the Ferguson protests came uh, to fruition and um, how I merged, how I, I became able to understand um, that movement through um, the ways that uh, my family, how I'd seen us fighting for our freedoms within interpersonal and communal relationships. So basically what I'm trying to do in this book is take those, the, those more micro-level relationships um, and experiences and extrapolate um, from that um, tools that we can use to change culture, to change community, and, and to, uh, to change our larger community into one that is more freeing for marginalized people, Black queer people in particular. So I wrote this book um, in two alternating parts. Um, half of the book is written in epistolary form to my younger self. Um, and I did that because uh, as I was writing this book, I um, was also in um, cognitive behavioral therapy um, because a lot of things were coming up, as you can imagine. I'm mean, just talking about serious issues. Um, my mother was also dying at the time. She was diagnosed with terminal cancer um, right when I started this book. And so trying to engage with um, that relationship and, and a lot of the hurt and the pain that came from um, some unresolved things in that relationship 
uh, really brought up a lot. And so in therapy, my uh, my therapist offered um, this tool called inner child work, which is uh, a process where you engage with a younger um, version of yourself um, and you can talk to them directly. There are different ways to engage in inner child work, but basically it's recognizing that there are parts of yourself that still operate from that position um, of, as a child. Um, and a lot of times when we've gone through childhood trauma, those parts of ourselves are kind of disconnected from us. Um, and so we might react to say your mother, um, uh, you know, missing your call um, from, you know, that uh, from that child who might not have gotten that attention from your mother. And then you, if you haven't done this work or um, you can do it outside of inner child work, but I think inner child work helps you to realize that that's, this is where this anger is stemming from. Um, and so a lot of what was coming up stemmed from a lot of the childhood trauma that was unresolved and inner child work helped me reconnect with those parts of myself that, um, that I wasn't listening to, that I wasn't engaging with, that I wasn't responding to when that part of me needed something. Um, and so as I was engaging in that in therapy, I realized that so much of this book also felt therapeutic, it was also about healing. And I wanted to incorporate that into how I wrote the book. And so in these epistolary chapters, I write to this younger version of myself, um, the parts of me that I can feel coming up when I have these unresolved issues, um, and in particular, uh, unresolved issues that are, are, are addressed in the book. Um, a lot of that had to do with how my gender was policed um, and other issues that um, I, I tried to just deal with on my own and push away. Um, and how that led to me internalizing, much in the same way that my mother had internalized a lot of the harmful um, ways that my grandmother engaged with her, even as she was pushing back against that. And so I offer this um, tool, um, uh, or I, I communicate that this tool was offered to me and it was helpful in my journey. Um, in this book through these chapters of engaging with, you know, some of the issues that um, have come up in my life uh, by writing to my younger self. And the writing process was quite an intense one. Um, as I said, a lot of things were coming up, especially around my mother's health. Um, but it was also a very, very um, healing one. I think um, what it taught me is that the importance of grieving um, and, and that's something that um, you don't have to wait until something is, is gone in the ways that we think of it as gone to start that process. I was grieving my mother before she left, um, but I was also grieving this part of myself um, that, uh, that I hadn't engaged with in so many years because I pushed that part of myself away. Um, and I needed to, to do that grieving before I could, um, before I could heal. And so what I'm offering in this book is a ways for people and black people in particular and black queer people, if you want to get more specific, um, ways that we can use the, our own healing journeys to change our communities, um, to change our relationships with other people um, and to, to our, ourselves. Um, I think it sounds uh, very self Scented sometimes, but I wrote this book for myself. I, I needed a, to do healing um, internally, um, and I think that it's really helpful to offer these processes that we might do within ourselves, within our communities, to other people without losing sight of um, the work that we need to do. Um, and so I hope that there's a lot that other folks can gain from this work. Um, and so far, I've been getting really great responses um, towards that. But uh, ultimately, I think that that was only possible because of the work that I was doing with myself. Um, so yeah, the book is Black Boy Out of Time. Um, it's available online wherever you buy books. And um, you can find more about me and the book um, at my website, hariziad.com. Or you can follow me on socials at hariziad. Um, and I can't wait to hear um, the kind of healing work that you're able to do with this book. Um, I hope you're, you're, you enjoy um, the work that uh, 
of the stories that are told um, and learn a little bit about what this experience um, and this little life of mine is like. Um, and thank you so much for listening and Lakewood Library for having me be a part of the series.